Up to this point, we've been solving problems using the individual equations that govern the theory of the torsion of round circular bars. Uh, but it, you'll recall that when we were dealing with the case of uh, axial forces on the bars, we also had a differential equation approach. And in particular, for the linear elastic case, we had the second order differential equation of equilibrium for the system in terms of the displacements. And so we solved a number of problems using this differential equation here. And the way it worked was we would set up some boundary conditions, solve for the displacement field. And knowing the displacement field, then we could easily back calculate things like strains and stresses and internal forces. So I'd like to go ahead and look at what the counterpart to this relationship is for the torsion problem. So let's go ahead and start with the equilibrium equation, which says dtdz plus little t equals 0. So capital T is internal torque on any section cut and little t is any distributed torque along the length of the bar. And I can replace capital T by gj d phi dz. So you'll recall that the internal torque is gj d phi dz for a homogeneous elastic system. And so if I put that together, I have a very similar looking relationship for equilibrium, but now it's in terms of the rotation field of the system. And ae has now been replaced by gj, and little b is replaced by little t. But otherwise, it's exactly the same setup as we had for axial forces. Uh, boundary conditions are needed to solve these types of problems. And there's two basic boundary conditions that we will see. Uh, one's where the rotation is prescribed. So we'll either prescribe the rotation at z equals 0 or z equals l. Or we'll prescribe the torque. And we always convert the boundary conditions into those in terms of the rotation. So if I know the torque at, say, z equals 0, that amounts to specifying gj times the twist rate at 0. Or if I know the torque at z equals l, that amounts to specifying gj times the twist rate at l. All other torques applied to the system, in other words, those between 0 and l, they are represented by little t. So if you have a point torque in the middle of the bar, you represented by a delta function in little t. Uh, and then once v of z is known, you can go ahead and back calculate any quantity that may be of interest. So you can go ahead and calculate the shear strains by taking a derivative. You can multiply by g. You can get the shear stresses. And then if you would like, you can go ahead and get the torque by multiplying the twist rate by gj. And if, it's an, if it is a composite bar, that would be gj effective. So, And by the way, in that case here, this gj here would be gj effective. So if so if you have homogeneous systems, it's just gj. If it's an inhomogeneous system, it'll be gj effective.